Watching birds at Monterey Bay, California, we saw these curlews finding food in the sand with their long skinny bills. When this seagull crashed their party, it found a crab to eat. This individual seemed better provided than this swirling flock of seagulls. They seem highly excited about something below in the water. They're seeking a meal and somehow not flying into one another as they fly in these formations. This gull seemed to be content to be away from all that swirling action. To Liz and me, it seemed to know what it was doing. It confidently advanced into the water, not having to compete with other gulls for food. And food is exactly what it came up with. But what is this animal it's eating? We thought we saw that it was a crab at first. Then immediately I announced that it was a crawfish. But looking closer, we see that it's neither of those. It's some kind of crustacean, though. The gull swallowed it whole, then went back in the water and instantly came up with another one. Far from the maddening crowd, this seagull seems to have found the mother load of this shrimpy, crawfishy creature, and it didn't mind dining alone. With its slightly curved beak, the gull tears the prey apart. It seems to prefer the main body of this creature. She carried the crustacean out of the advancing water and ate it whole. Then she wasted no time going back into the water and again came up with the same creature. This is not a gull that needs to learn how to fish. I've often seen seagulls steal food from the mouth of a flock member. Perhaps that's why this one chooses to dine alone. This one was so successful in finding food we began to worry that it would overeat, like eat itself sick. Well, maybe it's a mom who'll regurgitate some of this food for her chick, hidden away somewhere. Other seagulls were close by, but none of them bothered her, nor did they seem as successful in finding food. This seagull led our eyes to a group of them, assembled on the beach. Seagulls are expert flyers. Their wings are long in comparison to their bodies, and the shape is a factor, the tapered ends helping them make sharp turns in the air. Looking down on the bay, these seagulls had much to be excited about. The water was teeming with life, like this jelly. I know I was excited. This was way larger than the jellies I'd seen before in Alaska. Now our eyes were drawn to this bright creature. Isn't this the same crustacean that the seagull was gorging on earlier? I suppose that people living in Monterey know the name of this crustacean. There were certainly a lot of them in the water. Let's watch what this one does. Then we saw this. Thousands if not millions of these tiny immature fish. They swam together just under the surface of the water, clustered in schools, all swimming in the same direction. And right there among them was the orange thing. Perhaps they were food for the crustaceans. So we were seeing a food chain right before our eyes. We weren't the only ones seeing the large mats of tiny fish and the orange creature. This grebe was finding plenty of food to dive for. It looks as if these fish still had external gills. They were of little interest to this curlew. The curlew's very long skinny curved beak is an adaptation for getting a totally different kind of meal. The curlew seeks tiny creatures living in the sand. Back to the solitary seagull that's such a successful hunter. We expected to see her eat more of those orange creatures. Again she advanced out into the bay. 
We wondered how many had she eaten while we were focused on other life in the bay. Suddenly she flew up into the air. She did what seagulls do best. She flew. When a gull flies over the sea, it's called a seagull. When it flies over the bay, is it called a bagel? There are many species of seagulls, all of them having incredible flying ability. No wonder writer Richard Bach chose this bird for his work, Jonathan Livingston Seagull. Plenty of inspiration here. You're watching Ramping Up Your English. This is segment two of episode 73. Now, watching the previous video, I think that was a crawfish the girl was eating. You know, I've seen my share in Louisiana, but they were always crawling somewhere. I don't remember seeing them swim. Well, whatever it was, there was plenty of them, and we only saw that particular gull eating them. Bird watching can be very rewarding, and it's the fastest growing pastime, according to some people. There are plenty of gulls for these boys to watch. But notice where they're pointing their binoculars. They're checking out the white pelicans. There are plenty of birds here for watching. The binoculars are pointed toward the seagulls, but another white pelican glides in, stealing the show. Other birds are flying around as well. It takes some skill to adjust binoculars for a focused view, but the results are well worth the effort. The kids were at the edge of the water, right where some of the most interesting birds are found. One type of bird that's encountered near water is the cormorant. Cormorants are graceful flyers when skimming the water like this one on the Columbia River. But they also move well underwater, where they dive for fish, eels, and water snakes. Cormorants are found near water for obvious reasons, considering their diet but they're only found in coastal and inland waterways. They build communal nests in such places, much like herons. Here we see a cormorant carrying a stick with which to build or add to a nest. Even when not nesting, it's not unusual to see cormorants grouped together. The ancestors of cormorants date back to the days when dinosaurs lived on Earth. The earliest known modern bird had the body structure of a cormorant. If you're around a body of water long enough, you're likely to see a cormorant, and they're easy to identify by the behavior you see here. Cormorants spread their wings like this to dry their feathers, especially after a dive into the water to catch a meal. Cormorants are not the only birds diving into the water for fish. These arctic terns make dramatic dives when the payoff is food. They may not dive as deep as a cormorant, but they sure put on quite a show when they're in a feeding frenzy like these terns. These scoters are only one of two species of birds with completely white bills. They're examples of waterfowl, and they are built similar to coots, only slightly larger. Scoters are often found in open water, I saw these in the Pacific Ocean at the Oregon coast. I saw others in the Salish Sea near the San Juan Islands. On both occasions, the scoters were close to shore, like this rocky shore in Oregon. The beach is where you can find marine birds and shore birds together. Some spend their days out to sea, diving for food, then retire to the beach at the end of the day. These birds at Cannon Beach in Oregon gather at dusk. The long stilty legs and very skinny long beak equip these shorebirds for their habitat. As noted in a previous episode, birds, especially a diversity of bird species, tells us a great deal about the health of the environment. Scientists use data about bird populations in their studies of the ecosystem other people watch them for the sheer joy of it. With so many birds out during the day, there's no reason to miss out on the avian life that surrounds us. With little effort and a pair of binoculars, we can observe and learn about these animals on the wing. 
Like these children, you don't have to be an expert on birds to enjoy watching them. Speaking of watching birds, we'll do more of that when we return. Get away, get away now. Get away, get away, get away now. Take a plane, take a train, take a car. Just get away, get away, get away now. Just get away, get away, get away now. Hi, I'm Regina Ayers and the host of Getaway Girl. Join me to learn how travel can open you up to new people new experiences, and new inspirations. You can take on a new persona when you travel, lighter, freer, more willing to be spontaneous and able to just go with the flow. I know I do. You can join me and travel around the world. Uganda and Rwanda to see the great apes. Netherlands to see Amsterdam from the canals. See Cuba and Havana and the countryside. Or travel to Myanmar to see the temples of Old Bagan. Russia to walk the streets of Moscow. Join me soon for Getaway Girl. 